Hello lovely people, welcome to my channel, it's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitch and thank you so much for tuning in. So here we are at the beginning of a new cycle of Berta Style subscriptions. So this is the first of the 2022 subscription, which took a, quite a while to get to me, um, as I'm sure anybody who's been doing any online shopping can relate. There's just been a lot of disruptions with things that are getting imported. So here we are, a lovely pinky bright uh, cover to lift the spirits during these dull January days, certainly for me. And currently in my garden is basically dead except for this. This is a winter jasmine and it's a very early flowering type of jasmine. It flowers during the winter and so you get like this teeny tiny little pops of um, sunshine and I really do love and appreciate this when literally everything else is dead in my garden and I just have these little stalks. So I am sending you little bits of this winter jasmine sunshine wherever you are in the world. Right, we've got the line drawing, so I'm just going to pop you. No, let's put you over there. Oop, it's popping. Okay, so we have the line drawings. Where are they? Okay, line drawings over here, and this is our magazine. So it's got be happy, and it's like an admonition for these wintry days. Yes, be happy. You know, we're nearly there. We're headed towards spring now. The days are getting lighter. So, <laughs> you know, quite a nice, uh, I think, a nice little uplifting idea. Okay, so this, this feels like it's quite a thicker issue, and that's because... They seem to have a lot more ads in this one, a lot more adverts in this, which I think is a good thing because um, that means that they won't go out of business soon. Yeah, <laughs> um, I quite liked this um, at the beginning of the year because it's given me ideas about how I may want to improve my sewing room. I've been looking at getting a new iron for quite a while now, um, but we'll have to see. Okay. So to start off with, first of all, I do love the colors. I feel like I'm getting a lot of really great biofeedback. Where I live right now, it is very gray, and there is uh, very little going on by way of color in the garden, so I really do like this. We have a very simple uh, blouse. Just uh, This blouse here is asymmetrical, so it's just got that little bit of interest uh, because this doesn't go down the center front and you can see how you might have fun with this facing by having the facing in a different color they've used a print fabric here and i think that that does look lovely i can see this being of interest to somebody who wants something um, a blouse but just with a little bit just a little bit of interest but not too um, outlandish and then we have this a very simple top with a 60s style funnel collar and you've got the gathering here and the cuffs and I think this is a lovely silhouette you can never go wrong with a silhouette like this and you just let your fabric shine and I think that they've used the perfect sort of fabric for this so this is like a wool it's like a, a wool that's just really nice and stable and it's holding that puff very beautifully and more importantly it's holding that collar there. I mean, looks a bit itchy but it looks like she's wearing a dress underneath it. I would say that if you're going to use anything that's uh, got wool, um, you'd need to think about whether you'd wear it uh, direct to the skin or not. You see, and then we've got a, a lovely coat which is the featured sewing pattern that means that you get the illustrations with it. Beautiful color that they've used this burgundy like, and it's got very clean lines, and that's because it's got snaps instead of buttons. And I do find that snaps give you such a very clean, simplistic feel to it, and also a certain amount of sophistication. Um, I always think that when I see a jacket that's closed at the front and i know that it opens but you can't see a zip or uh, buttons on it it just adds a level of sophistication if you're looking for that sort of thing and it's got some really nice gigantic pockets which are very very useful so i thought that that was a good one i can see this one being quite popular and it does fit in with some of the trends that i have noted 
where you have these coats that don't have the lapels or any collars or anything like that. And then over here, we had head into dramatic territory with this cropped blazer, which personally, I don't think that cropped blazers are a timeless classic because this is going to take a long time to make up. I'm of the opinion that if you're going to put in a lot of time and effort to make something that is tailored, you need to make it something that is classic and timeless. For me, this feels a little bit on the trendy side. Um, the print is lovely. I think that it's a nice bold print and I like how they've paired it with um, a matchy matchy skirt. Uh, but yeah, I, I do think that the cropped jacket, it's a little bit more on the trendy side than it is a timeless classic. And, you know, if you're going to spend time on making something, I, I feel like it's something that you should be able to wear over and over again. So this is the pattern for the skirt. It's a very simple pattern. So this actual line drawing is showing the lace version that we're going to see later. But yeah, simples um, and straightforward. Okay, and then we have here uh, this integrated scarf top, which seems to be becoming more um more resident in quite a lot of the burda issues i feel like um i've definitely seen several of these patterns in the last few months that's why i got a bit of a sense of a deja vu so um this is actually the dress version of the line drawing but it's basically um the top cut over here and we've got this center panel what is different about this one though whereas with the previous ones you'd have like the scarf just connected through here on the neckline this one takes it um, a little bit further by having the center panel then become the scarf and then you kind of wrap it around you. Um, hmm. I'm going to reserve judgment on this until I see what people actually do with this one um, on the uh, Birda forum. And unfortunately, my line drawing for this one didn't print out, but it's a simple quilted jacket that you finish off with bias binding and you just do like a lot of that fancy quilt stitching. Uh, interesting use of the pink pants with the pink trims. That's a nice idea. And then over here, we've got these really lovely looking cigarette style pants. And I love this. Out of all of the things that are actually in this issue, these are probably the ones that I'd be most likely to make. And that's because they do fit in with the soft gamine principles that I do try, uh, that I'm really trying to adopt within my wardrobe. So um, they are tight at the ankles and they expose the ankles and they're relatively close and form fitting and they're relatively high waist from what I can see from the pictures they're high waist and of course they've got pockets and pockets are everything so I do quite like these so these got a like a, huh, a little asterisk for when I have the time to because uh, it is the new year and I don't know about all of you but uh, it kind of feels like there's a lot of stuff that just needs to be caught up with um, in the new year especially post Christmas Anyway, moving on, we have this really lovely, lovely, simple style dress. Um, you know, you've got your bust dots over here for the shaping, and then you've got your fisheye dots at the back, the double dots. But what makes this one a little bit unique is that it's got this tie belt here, which is asymmetrical, so you can add further shaping or you could just skip the belt altogether and just have it simply um, hang the sleeves are very flattery very dramatic sleeves with a lovely bold neckline i think that this would be popular simply because it is a pattern that allows the fabric to shine shine bright like a diamond okay and then we've got a really quirky unique style top for those that like t-shirts but you just want to add a little bit of something to the t-shirt this is a fantastic way to go drop shoulders so very relaxed fit and then you've got the pleated origami thingy there just to add the interest um to it you could yeah i think that this would be nice with french terry as well because the neck is wide enough uh, for that and this is the tall pattern um by the way and then we have here these um culottes slash uh, funky skirt 
trouser thingy with a pleated front um, over here and I like the fabulous um, fabric that they've used here this is a really really beautiful fabric and generally the styling on this is something that I can get behind I feel like it's very practical for winter uh, there's nothing that's exposed to the elements as far as I can tell and you've got the bag and she's got she's layered with the turtleneck and I like that and I like the cute little bag so I'm kind of like I make a note that this is something that I could try out next winter <laughs> And that is the featured sewing lesson over there. Um, and as I said, there's been a lot of ads um, in this particular issue. Okay, and then we come to... Um, this was possibly my least favorite section, and that's just because of the colors. Um, but I, you know, I did try my best to be objective, to look past the colors. But again, um, these trousers, they are so cute and they just fit the Gamine principles so perfectly with how they look and feel. And you get a better idea of what they look like in this picture here with the pockets. Although when I make them, I probably won't bother with um, the turn up pocket that's there, which has got piping on it. Um, yeah, pipe, piping is... Um, yeah, I've got thoughts on piping. <laughs> And then over here, we've got um, that cropped uh, blazer again. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of the trendy ones. I think that classic blazers are absolutely gorgeous, especially if you make them in a neutral. You get so much wear out of them for a really long time. But cropped ones, I'm not, I'm not yet convinced that um, they work as well as a full blazer and then we have this dress that upon repeated browsings is actually catching my eye more and more because i can see the potential especially if you use a drapey fabric so simple bodies with a gathered square uh, skirt and the sleeve has just got this little tuck here that just gives it a lovely flattering i think a lovely flattering uh, poofiness it's not overly poofy, but it just has some shaping. Consequently, it means that your fabric of choice needs to be something that can hold uh, hold that shape in order for you to be able to see that there's a pleat there. So something like uh, poplin, poplin or broadcloth or even tanalon. So I think that this does have some potential and clearly it's a little bit more empire waist than it is natural waistline. And we have a round neck. So this is one of those simple sorts of styles that I can see becoming popular because of how quickly it would be to whip this up. It doesn't have a zipper and it's just got this simple button and loop over there. And if you just have some fabric that you really like, you can just whip this up uh, super quickly. And yeah, I can see that one being something that will pop up a lot on the uh, bird of sewing community because I have noticed that simplicity seems to win over. And it makes sense. We're really... We're really busy uh, with a lot of other things going on and you don't necessarily have the time to do the more complex stuff and you just, you know, really want to have something. So <laughs> I can see why they tend towards simpler themes uh, for the most part. Then we've got a fabulous 60s style swing jacket uh, over here, which we've seen before in 2020. I'm pretty sure there was one, one that was in 2020 and was in a beautiful peppermint uh, wool and it was just really gorgeous and I feel like this is very similar except for it's a bit shorter and the collar has just been reduced in size but it's got raglan sleeves beautiful fabric that they have used it's so poppy it's so zesty and great styling with the simple black turtleneck and the black thing is just one of those things where you, you're saying let the statement of the coat speak um, more than anything else and then we've got that top again with just the simple um, origami pleating and it's a great example of how you can just do simple pleating to add interest to a top and it looks so gorgeous in this particular uh, version over here let's just zoom you back in you know absolutely gorgeous and you can see the neckline there finished off with the facing um, this was my favorite interpretation of this uh, particular one and then over here we've got that top again with the asymmetrical side which actually just reminded me of sometimes when you go to those nail spas and uh, they tend to have tops that have these asymmetrical um, sides but yeah <laughs> and then we have here a lovely looking relaxed top a sweater top which actually uses a mixture of a uh, fabric i think yeah a uh, straight uh, fabric and then you've got the knitted cuff over here cute details with a little ruffle on the neckline um 
over there. But I have to say, uh, because the back has to be finished off like this, I'm not too keen on the idea. Generally, I found that mixing knits and uh, wovens it can be a little bit tricky, a little bit tricky. Um, and certainly even when it comes to caring for them as well. So again, more ads, ideas for stuff to buy for kids, and ideas for stuff to get for them. And then we've got a lovely, I love this fabric, by the way. It's sort of like, um, I want to say broderie anglaise, but not quite because the stuff isn't embroidered on. It's like it isn't cut out, but it's really, really beautiful fabric. And this is the petite pattern and it's a blouse. But just adding this little detail of the ruffle on the neck just gives it such a lovely romantic feel to it. And I was just like, huh, nice. And we have that uh, top again with the funnel neckline, so very 60s style. But this time it's been made in a slightly drapier knit fabric. Um, yeah, and it, uh, it does look lovely. Oh, and this dress here has been made into a top. And I do like this interpretation a lot better um, than that first one. Maybe it's because it's the blues and whites, but I do like how this looks. And I can see this also being something that works really well in spring um, as well. And then we're back again with that uh, 60s dial swing jacket, except for it's been maxified and it is super, super long. And it looks really gorgeous because they've got this uh, tooled skirt that's just allowing it to, you know, fluff off the way that it is supposed to uh, fluff off. But this is definitely a statement coat. Statement coat. And we've got that uh, dress that we saw in the beginning, except for this time the sleeve has been made into a two-part sleeve to give it a nice 70s maxi style vibe by giving it the cuff and then the base. And there is some piping detail which sadly is lost in all of the print that's here. But can you see why this could be a popular pattern? I can see this being quite popular. And over here, we've got another lovely interpretation of the center scarf top. Center, let's see what we can call this. Um, integrated center scarf dress. <laughs> I think that works. And uh, here, we can see how it goes around the neck. Um, so it gives it like a very... Uh, a lot of ruching details so if you like ruching if you like a lot of folds in what you're wearing this here works for it because it does make it look like oh oh she's got a cowl neck underneath with a matching scarf oh but hang on when you then flip it over it's like oh, the scarf is part of the dress you know it's pretty um yeah i like it sometimes when designs can give you interest like that and then we've got that skirt again, except for it's been made with the lace, um, with the lace uh, overlay. That's the word. Okay, and I thought this wins photo of the <laughs> year award. I mean, how else are you going to show that this is actually a trousers? Because you know, I imagine that the folds on that uh, fabric were just constantly butting up against each other, so you couldn't really see that it was culottes. So. You're just going to put your foot up and we're going to show that it's like, I just thought it was so fabulous. And you can see that the model is having such a banging time with it. And I just, I loved the energy and the vibe of this, which is very like, this is what you want to do. If you're a Zoe magazine, you want to make sure that you're showing exactly what it is you would be showing. So I thought that that was quite cool <laughs> and gave me a giggle. It was quite lovely. And I shared it with my husband. I guess I gained more ads for face creams. Okay, so this is the designer pattern. And I'm really glad that Berta are still doing the designer stuff, especially to cater for, you know, people that are into making something that is very unique for events and stuff like that. I mean, I don't have any events really to go to. But this is a lovely looking cocktail dress, I think. So to me, it's got... Um, it's got the adventurousness of some of the 60s, 70s design. I would say because it's got the mixture of the classic silhouette over here and then you have this like almost like it's it, it's an explosion of stardust if that makes sense. <laughs> um so yeah so I I thought that that was a really interesting uh, one and also if you don't want the fancy uh foof 
going on here. You can just remove that and it still has got an interesting uh, design line. So if we look at the sketches, I, I thought that this was quite, um, I cannot wait to see what the Berta community makes with this. I cannot wait. And so you could also make it into a top. So it's like a cami top, but then you add your own little, um, I say halo, your own little haze on it. It's just, yeah, it's quite interesting to look at. So um, that was that one. And then uh, on the plus size section, they sort of like have like this really tailoring looks and I, I do think that is quite outstanding especially the level of tailoring that is on there is so inspiring so uh, first off we have this cape this was also available in a Birda Easy one of the more recent Birda Easy magazines but the difference is this one has got welt pockets added and if you've ever sewn a welt pocket my friend you will know that that is an advanced technique so we have that, and it's in beautiful camels, uh, camel color, and they, there's just something so classic about the camel um, as a blazer or as a cape or as a coat. And then we have this really fabulous, fabulous looking blazer style. So very heritage, very tweed, and I love how they've used the contrasting on here, and you've got the piping. See, for me, this is beautiful piping work. Piping should be visible because it, is so hard to do so you gotta show it off <laughs> that's my philosophy and then you've got like this beautiful um little i like this i don't know what this is called though where it doesn't go straight down and it just creates like this little um silhouette like a little chevron over there uh, so yeah i thought that this was really really beautiful excellently beautifully tailored beautifully made and then we've got a pair of trousers over here um, and they've got pockets and a center crease at the front. Beautiful. And a pinafore dress, um, which has got some really lovely details. So you've got the princess line up to the shoulder there. And then you've got the belt, which you could have fun with by having these in contrasting colors. And yeah, so again, I'm getting this very wonderful heritage vibe. And I also love the styling on here, how practical it is, because you've got it layered underneath the turtleneck and you've got the tights and the shoes there. And scuff, really, really well done, really well done. Great ideas for how to put a wardrobe together in winter. And then I didn't quite get the line drawing for this, but it's like a wavy waterfall cardigan um, type thingy. And over here, we've got the trousers again, but this time they've got a little cuff turn up, which I think there is just something so sassy about having a cuff turn up on the bottom of a, a trousers. I think that that is so cute. And again, I love this practical interpretation of how to dress for winter. It's, it's so practical. It's not like hot fashion that's really impractical but you know you've got the socks there and you've got the loafers that are very comfortable for walking on cobbled streets and you've got the trousers and a vest and the turtleneck I love that love that I get great ideas for that and then we've got um little boys uh shirts and these are the sizes 98 to 122 we also have a little boy sweater over here raglan sleeve and over here we've got a wrap skirt so simple wrap skirt a-line style probably midi length and it's you know it's a useful thing to have in winter um for the more somebody who wants to make something really fancy for their kids you can there's this denim jacket which they added here however my experience is that kids grow up so 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 so, so fast if you're going to be making this you need to make it quick Absolutely quick. And then we've got some trousers. Very useful. I'll probably be looking at making some of these for my son because he just seems to have gotten holes in a lot of his trousers recently. And then we've got um, what I like to call the bird at top, which is normally the simple neckline, slight drop shoulder. But then we add just a little tweak to it. And this little tweak is two pleats by the neckline. Two pleats by the neckline that you can hardly see because the print is so busy. So you might as well just you know leave them out and let the fabric shine but i thought that the plus size section was absolutely gorgeous with the tailoring luxe uh, feel that was there so that is what we have 
uh, for this issue. So it feels really quite thick, like it's a bumper issue, the German issue, because there was a lot of ads, as I said. And this is all that we have. And as I mentioned before, for me, it's about the trousers, number 108, because I feel like those really fit the soft gamine principles. And I have been wearing similar sorts of trousers for winter, and I've been liking it. And I like the idea of creating a capsule wardrobe wherein I have trousers like this in either navy or black, because those are some of my two neutrals. So that's the thing that I would definitely be like practically looking at sewing sometime in the future once everything is done that needs to get done. So that's the issue. Uh, let me know if you're going to be making anything from this issue, if you've already made um, anything for, uh, from it, because I imagine that a lot of you have already received this issue. Mine was quite late. Um, but yeah, until I see you next time, lovely people, thank you so much for hanging out with me and enjoying this uh, lovely craft that we like that is called uh, sewing. And I will see you very soon in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye.